I think we're going to try to um, do a stop and chop technique for this patient. So we'll start with the standard um, central groove, but then we're going to switch to horizontal chopping. And um, this is just uh, to show how we transition to that uh, technique, which is good for denser lenses uh, and um, useful in uh, high myopia cases. We'll be doing a clear corneal incision for this. I like to keep the uh, forceps open to stabilize the globe. And we're going to go ahead and put in some viscoelastic. So we're going to go in here. We're going to deepen the chamber. And we'll use the keratome to stabilize the globe with our paracentesis. Can enter a little vertically, then flatten it out. Moving forward here and just wiggling a little bit for maximum control. When we get a little further, we can dimple down in and again, just wiggle it in through Bowman's and then flatten it out. Standard size capsule rexus. To relatively center, push out in a straight line, lift up, turning over that edge. We're going to go ahead and use the capsule rexus forceps. And again, I like to pull about two to three clock hours and let go for maximum control. And again, I'm keeping this turned over. Again, it's sticking a little bit centrally. I'm just going to free it up. And again, we're going to go keep going around. And we have a nice round rexus. When we do the hydrodissection, our goal is to not go 180 degrees across, but about 90 degrees away, where we can see the edge of the capsule very well. Going under the edge here, I'm lifting up and I'm pushing. I'm getting, I already saw the fluid wave. I see the lens rising already. I'm going to stop. I'm already getting a little iris to the wound. I'm going to press down. And I'm going to add just a little bit more here. I'm getting some iris prolapse, which is not good. So I'm letting some fluid out of here. See, it's viscoelastic. I'm just pressing down on the wound. Now, we remember we talked during the lecture to let some fluid out of the paracentesis. Okay. Now we should be soft enough. I should be able to allow that to go back in. So now we're going to try to turn. We do the sub incisional. So here the lens easily turns. Again, I can turn it. Yep. So we're all ready. So again, we're going to go inside here. And here. Good. Now, again, there's a pre chop setting. This is just to get rid of some of the viscoelastic and some of the cortex on the surface within the capsule rexus just to make it easier to perform your surgery that's what we're doing here we're going to advance it to sculpt we're going to start superior enough now i do it is a little dense which we know and we're not including the whole tip only about 50 percent So that's pretty good. Now you can you can crack this or try to. So we're just gonna try to crack, which it did. Now we're gonna do our stop and chop. So we can turn this. 
Now what we're going to do is go to the chop setting. Okay, so this is a different setting. We're going to engage the nucleus. Uh, we're going to pull it towards us, and we're going to put this chopper underneath. This is a horizontal chopper. You can see it's blunt at the end. We're going to engage the center, so we engage the... And you get behind it, and you bring it toward you, and you chop the piece. You can take the piece right out. Sometimes people um, keep the, the fragments in place or keep some of the fragments in place. Again, we're gonna, you have to fake go into the piece, pull it toward you. Okay, and then bring it toward you. I'm going to rotate again. Can you want to fake a right in kind of the center area? Oh, this one's already partially cracked, but you can pull it out. You can go around and separate it. Last piece, it's a little big. You can hold it, you can bring the chopper around. Wanna separate it, sometimes not so easy. And we're just keeping this in the center. You see, I'm not really moving my tip around. I rotate it a little bit, but I'm, and I'm keeping my second instrument close by below my FACO tip. And again, we just rotate. Remember, we're using our fluidics here. And I've got a little cortex here. I'm not sure I'm going to get rid of that. There, you actually came out. OK, and we're all done. We'll put the chopper back and remove the cortex. There's not lots of cortex here. You can see this tangential stripping. Sometimes you have to go a little bit further. So he has some sticky cortex. It's not coming off as easily as we'd like. And his, um, so the lens is bigger. So sometimes the cortex can be, or the bag can be a little bit more floppy. And of course, the sub incisional is the toughest. So that's very good. We just got we have a little bit of sub incisional cortex. So here, there's just a little little bit of cortex. I can't quite get it out. So this is the kind of cortex that you just decide sometimes safer to leave than to try to remove. So we're going to inflate the capsular bag. 
We, we have a little iris prolapse. We don't want to overinflate, but we want to get under the capsule. Sometimes we remove the cells on the back of the anterior capsule. Uh, from a clinically scientific standpoint, I don't know that it's been shown to make a difference in any of the studies. So um, I do it in cases uh, where there's pseudoexfoliation, retinitis pigmentosa, cases of uveitis, cases where we know these patients are at risk for anterior capsular phimosis. Now, again, this one, we're just rotating position, but in general, I don't think it makes a difference. So here we've got the lens in the bag. We've got a little iris to the wound. I'm going to let a little visco out to try to control that. And then we'll go back to the IA. Again, I have a little bit of debris under the lens. I'm just going to lift the lens up here. And that's just to get rid of some of that. Makes it look a little just for a second. Then I go back and I hold it down to get all the viscoelastic out from the bag. Sometimes I go to each quadrant, just tapping as I am here. You're going all the way around. Now we see the iris near the wound wants to prolapse, doesn't it? Wants to come out. So how, what do we do about that? Well, what we do is we actually do what we call just a dry removal of the IA. So when I'm done ia I'm going to take my foot off the pedal. I'm going to actually let some fluid out. And then I'm going to come out. See, the iris already wants to come. I'm trying to let some fluid out. If you're having iris prolapse that you can't control, you really need to put a suture in. Putting a, a meiotic in to help bring down the pupil can sometimes be very helpful. Sometimes I just sweep under the um, subincisional area to make sure the iris is out of the way. Sometimes there's very small iris strands that you can't really see or appreciate. So... We're going to go ahead and hydrate the wound. Better. Yep. Okay, good. We're all done.